Museo de las Américas thanks its sponsor, Alpine Bank, and artist Gal Cohen for taking us on a tour of Testigos Witnesses. Welcome to Museo, Museo de las Américas in Denver. It is my privilege to give you a tour of the actual exhibit uh, on which we've been working for the last two years with the, uh, the, the, the direction, the directive of the museo. Uh, the exhibit is called Testigos Witnesses, so please follow me. I received a phone call a few years ago from a friend, an artist, who asked me to, uh, to go to his studio and uh, to buy two canvases from a man coming from an indigenous community where the artwork or the craftsmanship they do is amate paper. I went to, to buy the two canvases and met Don Genaro and that way he could go back to his village and this is the way he presents and sells his, his uh, canvases made of the bark of the amate tree. Uh, this piece uh, we fixed here so that people could touch it you know, to have a feeling of uh, the material on which we printed 11 different portraits. The first portrait is a child, four and a half months old. And what I wanted to do with this exhibit was, first of all, well, I should maybe tell you before how the project was born. The project was born because when I met Don Genaro and bought the two canvases, I also took a picture of him. But I only allowed myself to take one. And unfortunately, that one picture I took, or maybe I should say fortunately, had the picture cut at the bottom, uh, at the limit of his lips and his chin. So, photographically speaking, it was not a very good picture. Uh, but when I got home and I saw the size and of the, the, the canvases, and I looked at the picture, the idea came to cut this, the face in two parts and put the eyes above and the lips below. I even had a title for it, which was, it hasn't been kept because that was only for one picture, it was they see, lo ven todo, lo callan todo. They see everything, but they don't say nothing. That was the title of that artwork that I did, which was just one piece. Then, later on, uh, when uh, the director of the museo came to Guadalajara and saw that piece in my studio, she found it quite uh, impressive because of its size and because of the concept. So uh, I received a grant from the museo and went to San Pablito to take all the pictures that were needed for not only an exhibit as you, that we're going to see now, but also a documentary about life in San Pablito and on the other hand as well uh, a video that uh, was produced by museo about how uh, the Amate paper is being made. I'm a doctor in Chinese medicine and I specialize in thanatology. Thanatology is a science in medicine that deals with aspects of death, such as a person who is very ill and could die and needs to prepare and needs to connect with the family. And uh, I should add to this grief as well that we can help people uh, during the process of losing a loved one. So, as you saw the child, now you see the next portrait, which is 10 years from babyhood, childhood. And so, every 10 years, I have a different portrait. A different portrait from four months old, 10 years old, until 100 years old, and every 10 years, you do have a different portrait. All the people involved are all from the same pueblo, San Pablito, Pahuatlan, which is the birthplace, really, of Amate paper. And uh, most of them, 
do work on the craftsmanship of the paper itself, maybe in its production or maybe in its artistic part, using it for painting and other uh, artworks that uh, specializes in San Pablito. And so we do go from 10 years old to 20, 30, and finally, not finally, but at least in this room, and 40 year old segment. It is interesting to observe that when the paper, the paper can be made in different ways. It could be blackened, it could be with stains like the one we used, or it could even be totally white. We chose the stained one because we wanted the stains to be visible even after the printing of the digital image. We wanted this and what I said, we wanted the, the, this effect because as the witnesses of history, at least the history of this continent, I wanted to show how everything they did see during the few thousand years of uh, history and of being the witnesses of it, I wanted to symbolize that every event that they did watch is represented by a stain that covers their face. It is not just, uh, you know, very often when we talk about indigenous people, we go to the dramatic and tragic side of the conquista, which I'm not forgiving at all. Uh, and my honoring indigenous people has to do with that too. But in this case, the stains that represent the, the images of the whole history, there are very happy events, there are other events, and there are tragic events. I'm not making a difference. Life has its two sides, and uh, I think that we as well as human beings uh, photograph in our brain everything we have lived in lifetime and the, the same pictures we may have here uh, which is like a computer you know you just go and pick and say something put the right word and the picture comes if I'm telling you do you remember the first day you went to school in primary and suddenly whoop, the image comes out from the computer inside so just as we in our lifetime can remember uh, the images of our life because they are there as impressions that are not uh, uh, erased at all well symbolically the stage represents everything they've witnessed through history so here is uh, Donia Paola she represents the 50 year segment and next to her is Don Genaro. Don Genaro is my friend and Don Genaro is the person from whom I uh, bought the two original canvases and to whom I did cut the chin. This is not the picture that I originally took because several years passed through the first picture I took of him and the, the documental uh, portraits I did when I went to San Pablito. So this is a different picture uh, than the one I originally took. So here is Don Genaro. Don Genaro dedicates his life to, do, to, to produce Amate paper and then he makes 30 of them and goes all over Mexico. Once he goes in the south, when he goes east, when he goes north, once he, go, once he goes to Guadalajara, and does sell or tries to sell his paper maybe for artists so they can paint on it sometimes it's to uh, printing places and they use it as a cover for a book but that's what he dedicates uh, himself to and he was very enthusiastic with this project to show the importance of the amate paper uh, in, uh, in Mexico and the problems that uh, today the community has to face because of the lack of trees and uh, the difficulty, let's say, of the craftsmanship to go on. There used to be 17 pueblos in Mexico 
that traditionally produced the Amate paper. But because the children go to school, they're not interested in making paper in keeping with the tradition. So to Don Genaro, this is extremely important. His son, his grandson are already uh, artisans in the field and he hopes that uh, this exhibit will help uh, to some extent the, the, to, 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 to share the knowledge as well as the difficulties they have uh, 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 for the Amate paper to keep on uh, being traditionally produced. So there is Don Genaro representing a 40-year-old segment, Don Calixto, 70, Don Juan, 80, and we do have Don Enrique at 90 years old. Finally, finally we do have Doña Maria Paola, that represents a 100-year segment, but actually she was 105. She passed away last year. Well, at a good age, 106 is not a bad age to, to leave uh, to, 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 for the end of life. Um, well, I don't know what I was going to say, so leave it there. <laughs> uh, women are the foundation, really, uh, of a family, and the women are very important within this exhibit. So you do see from here, and I really love the setting of Museo because we were able to put them in such a way that is from birth all the way to old age, but at the same time from this point of view you have the child, who was a little girl, you have the 50 year old uh, woman and the 100 year, 105 year old woman. And uh, they represent the beginning, the end, and the middle. Because there are four men in between the baby and the 50-year-old, and there's four men between the 50-year-old and the 100-year-old. And to me, it's like the pillars, you know? I mean, life, life cannot be sustained without the strength uh, of the woman itself. There would be no babies if there were no women, no? Because they may be less participating because there are three of them, but they are the pillars that hold the whole show together. You know, many people ask me why are in your exhibits, because this is a traveling exhibit, it was already in, uh, in Guadalajara in January, it was unfortunately cancelled in Puebla and the city of Mexico because of Covid, and here we are, and I a request, or generally, uh, according to the possibilities, to have the walls painted in red. The, the reason, there are two reasons to it. The first one uh, is not because red represents blood, represents love as well, but yes, in this case, it does represent blood, but it doesn't represent the blood that has been, um, you know, uh, that has been, how do you say that in English? Uh, you know, by, by people being killed by the conquista. That's not the idea. When I think of my family tree, I can go back to my great-grandfather. And that's it. I don't know what your genealogical, genealogical tree will bring you to. Some can go to the 10th century. I've met some, to 1200. But I can't, and most probably you can't either. That's because we've traveled, we've come, we've gone, we've mixed, and so on. But the people of San Pablito can trace their ancestors in written history at least 1,600 years ago. And they are all buried in the same area. So they have a link with their ancestors that we do not have and their ancestor is as important as their descendant something that is totally different to us because we do not have a relationship even 
to go to the cemetery or to know where they are like they do. Therefore, the red represents the blood link between their ancestor, between those we have seen today, and their descendants. Because blood, or the bloodline, is something important in the life of everyone. That said, uh, I should say that also the red looked very good. It was very aesthetic uh, to show the, the canvases and to have the contrast of the picture. Those are the two reasons, but the main one is the blood, the blood link. And from that comes a question. Next year, 2021, is the 500th year of the commemoration of the beginning of the conquista by the Spaniards in Mexico and other countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. And the actual president of Mexico is asking the Spanish people to ask for forgiveness for the conquista and all what happened. And I want to bring uh, into the conversation, should Spain ask, say they are sorry for what happened, or should they not? Both sides, I'm not, I don't want to get into, uh, I want to get into a dialogue, but not into a fight about it. Respect for everyone, because your belief can be one and the other can be different and everything is valid, you know. But I think it's a theme that should be uh, addressed. I'm a Frenchman originally, and the French people have been doing, like the Spaniards, tremendous things. Like every human being that finds him or herself in a situation in which there is war, there is conquering, and there is where the worst of human being comes out. It is not just that it's the conquista and the Spanish. It is, honestly, just the situation in which human beings encounter themselves and the worst of them come out. On the other hand, there is an earthquake, there is a hurricane, and the best of human beings comes out. So, there is that question of duality that exists, but that is very actual now as far as uh, that possibility to ask forgiveness. I have no problem in the name of my people to tell all the American Indian uh, the indigenous communities that honestly I'm sorry that it happened that way. But it happened and I'm sorry that it happened. If it had been, you know, we can always say the other way around would it probably be also dramatic, you know, because that's the way human beings behave when there are wars or conquistas. That's just the fact. But it doesn't cost anything to say, I'm sorry for what happened. And if that can help heal the feelings of people that have been a living history with the uh, remembrance of dramatic events, it would be great. The Spaniards do say that they asked for forgiveness 200 years ago. And I'm going to tell them, yes, you did, and that's great. But you should do it once again, for only one reason. Because today, most people in indigenous communities do have something like this. And that will allow them, this time, to hear it all over the continent, all over the world, and we can all move on with, uh, como se dice, rencor, como se dice rencor? Uh, hatred? Resentment. Resentment, no? Uh, repentance? No, no, rencor, with, you know, all bad feelings could go away. And that would be a great thing to do, so may 2021, be the year when all this could be settled and everybody could feel good because only pride is what doesn't allow us to say, I'm sorry.